it's a little bit late today. I'm getting started. It's a little after 11 now. <clears throat> and I apologize if my throat is a little dry. Um, I went to a, a holiday gathering last night and it went on for much longer than I anticipated. Um, usually we're back home much earlier in the evening and I think it was nearly midnight before I got to sleep. So that may not sound very late to most of you, but for myself um, at my age, <laughs> that's like <laughs> really long. And uh, it's uh, caused me to sleep in. So I, I, I actually only got up maybe 20 minutes ago. So I'm still kind of half asleep. Um, so I don't really have a plan of attack yet. Um, usually, when before I stream, I, I'm up. Um, I'm kind of going through some of the things and I kind of formulate a plan of attack. Uh, but I have absolutely nothing this morning because, as I said, I just woke up. So you're gonna have to bear with me today. <coughs> Good morning, Soccer Top. Oh, and I got your message, by the way. And uh, no problem. Take as long as you want on you know your request. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Sucker Top um, won the um, viewer gift that I was awarding to some of my regular viewers. I gave them a chance to win a custom-built decor thing from me. And uh, at the moment, I think Sucker Top is still busy. I think trying to decide on the theme and everything of their plot and uh, once they get that sorted then they'll kind of have a better idea what they might want me to add or um, contribute to or whatever. Totally fine. Doesn't have to be now, doesn't have to be this month, it be whenever. Um, the offer is there so you know use it like a coupon you know cash in your coupon whenever it's convenient for you. And good morning to you too Bones, haven't seen you while I think we saw you the other day and it was like uh, you were um, uh, talking about working on your, your plot and then uh, you disappeared again. I expect that's going to be the case with a lot of people this last week or so because there's so much holiday stuff going on. There's going to be family things. In fact, I may be missing um, Thursday because uh, I have a, a little out of town thing. May or I may just uh, end up streaming much much later in the afternoon. But anyway, enough about that. Um, lots of things I want to show today uh, that I was thinking of as I was getting set up here. Um, first of all, you can see that my character has collected some of the the holiday decor. Um, not all of it is actually um, holiday stuff. It's just things that I've dyed holiday colorish. Um, but this is going to be my outfit for um, tomorrow's guild event and I figured well rather than just have it a one night thing I'm just gonna wear it for the next well up until the new year probably but I, I especially love the little the little headpiece here um, I actually have another um, uh, costume piece that has a mic but uh, this one has that little antenna thing it looks uh, super spacey so I prefer that uh, well, that explains it, Bones, if you've been working the late shift. I don't, uh, I can't imagine that's easy to do if you have shifts that change. I think that would, like, really mess up your internal clock to do that. Anyway, um, the next thing, uh, aside from my character, which has nothing to do with housing, really, um, maybe you notice the new music for um, the plot, if I can over here um, it is called holiday cheer for money um, that's the name of the tune and uh, I feel like I much prefer it over the the usual protostar one that um, I have playing when I've got protostar stuff on my plot uh, of course this <coughs> sorry this clearly is a holiday type of tune you'll hear some of I don't know I hear remnants of you know well-known holiday tunes kind of snuck in there so um, it won't be something that we'll be using year-round but um, it's definitely uh, a desirable one for this 
season. Um, so definitely next year when the season rolls around again, first of December, that that music's coming out because I, I love it. It sounds delicate but not too overly annoying, and uh, and I I love it too. Soccer is it's just a really nice tune. Um, it's the only uh, holiday music that I could find, um, and if I remember correctly, it was 25 gold, uh, which was a plus because I was afraid it was going to cost um, uh, cold cash, which because I haven't really been farming the instance, I haven't really been getting a lot of it, so I've been having to spend it very carefully on you know certain pieces. Uh, there is the sky. The Winterfest brought to you by Protostar, that's the one that we previewed on the PTR where it's like um, uh, like postcards or advertisement things all floating in the sky. That one, um, while it is available and, you know, if you're a collector, um, it's going to be something that you're going to want to grab. Uh, good morning, Norgna. Um, me, personally, I won't be buying it because I know for a solid fact I wouldn't be using it because I find it too, um, uh, too eyesore-ish, um, distracting or whatever. It just doesn't fit uh, any kind of shape or form, this particular build. Um, for someone else, it might work, but uh, for me, no. And so, since it does cost 50 um, cold cash, that's just not in my my uh, plan of purchase. Um, I would mention uh, there has been a couple of giveaways on uh, some of the um, uh, I can't think of the name um, like Facebook and stuff like that. Um, uh, I would strongly recommend following the Twitter feed of Wildstar to kind of catch um, when they announce those, but the one that um, I think it was uh, Massively OP uh, was giving some codes away for um, Proto Present Turret. It's not really housing related specifically, but you know, since it's limited to offer and uh, a lot of people might want it to kind of um, maybe role play or something on their house, I, I wanted to mention it. So the first one is the Proto Present Turret. It's a consumable that you pop out and you can reclaim it over and over again. I've, this will be like the third or fourth time I've gotten this thing. It pops up and it, I don't know if it like just sits there to you use it or what, but when you do use it, um, it shoots out some snowy and I don't know. Usually it like uh, disappears and there's like some some presents that you can <laughs> collect and it, it might have actually set them down inside, I don't know. Might have picked a bad spot, but uh, what happens is it leaves presents and then um, from those presents you get the little hair bows that uh, you can put on your character. Again, those are temporary consumables. Um, they're a little oversized and uh, ridiculously goofy looking, but you know, if you're trying to get into the spirit on your plot and you're looking for something to kind of add to your roleplay experience or something, that might be you know right up your your alley. The other one is the uh, Orbiter Golden Globe Boy. Um, that one is from uh, Wild Star's Facebook page. You do a couple of um, uh, actions like watch the video and um, go to their Winterfest page or something and you get this little toy and it's a little hovering um, snow globe with a little snowman in it. I, again, I, I don't know if it lasts. I'm pretty sure uh, it goes away if you like zone in and zone out, but like if you're wanting something to kind of be a little holiday-ish for your plot while you're standing here working on it, then that would be something for you. Um, you'll notice as well, I've collected a few more decor items, so got some new advertisement hanging up. <coughs> I got hold of a couple of the new gate um, fence post thingies. Gate post, I think is what it's called, Winterfest gate post. 
Yes. Snow <laughs> UFO, snow, snow food. I don't know. Um. So I've went ahead and changed out the uh, soda cups that I did have. Uh, because I really like the animation uh, of these, and they're a little bit skinnier. Um, it doesn't look as uh, clunky to me. Now, you'll notice that it's kind of bumped up right against... Um... Let me see if I can fix that. This is one of those instances where the, the handles for this thing is like... Too far down. Whoops. Looking the wrong thing. There we go. Gonna move this out a bit so it doesn't um, rub up against the little post there. Because this is just an extra decoration for the holiday later. Now, I don't want to remove the post that's uh, already there because, like I said, that's uh, going to remain. Because um, once I start removing some of these holiday decorations to kind of uh, tone down the mall itself, uh, you. Don't want to have to go back and figure out, okay, where did I have that and everything. So it's not a replacement, it's just kind of a added decoration. Um, but you can see, like, we have the wreath over the office door, a little faux door here. Um, added a few more bags, gift boxes and such. Um, eventually, I'm hoping to have some going all the way around, and if I'm lucky enough and get plenty, um, and put them elsewhere that I was wanting to and have some extras that I'm going to start stacking some but for now it's just going to be around but it's kind of funny because the way I've been putting them in it's kind of dwarfing my little faux uh, Papa Phineas here like a little little shrinky dink now a uh, little stocking um, more posters. I'm really starting to, to bring in the posters, trying to bring them in. I've decorated this little area a little bit um, with the snow globe uh, decor and the gate and the standee. I'm hoping to get a couple more of those as well. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? I think I think that's most of the new stuff out here. Um, again, I'm hoping to get a hold of more of these advertisements to go ahead and finish uh, putting a few here and there. I did do some work on the skating rink uh, last night. Well, not last night, but like early this morning because not only did I uh, arrive home um, really late and didn't get to bed till about midnight, I ended up uh, waking up about two o'clock in the morning and couldn't go back to sleep due to you know the usual um, so I come in here and did a little work added some benches on this side added some lamps a little bit of color um, for the area you'll see I've added that little uh, I think it's called the snowmatic or snow something it's the one that looks like a uh, like the, the protostar version um, it's blue and it has the little pumper things coming down and this one has the, the snow coming in I don't remember the name offhand otherwise I'd look it up but it spits out snow and I thought well maybe it's a little weird because you know you want your snow to be kind of melted on the little area here but I eh, just figured it was a, a nice effect so I used it um, I did add in um, the last of those boots that we had planned to um, finish. I did craft up the rest of the airtight containers for that. I've added the festive emblems and I'm pretending. Um, yeah, Bones, the thing with the three tubes, I, for life of me, I can't remember what the name was. So, something omatic, I think. Uh, or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but the festive emblems I'm using to um, represent for like little kitties that maybe have like little protective helmets for when they're ice skating. Um, added some registers. Um, I haven't really picked up any uh, NPCs recently, so there's a lot of places I would like to have some. 
like put a grumble here and a Nicosia there, but I just don't have them available. So it's just one of those things. But I have added a, a little bit of decoration, just little accents. Um, of course, probably the one of the bigger accents would be the icicles along the uh, little balconies here. Um, I may possibly continue that on around, but I think I just want it on the front, the, the parts that's facing the, the rink itself. Um, added in an extra spotlight, which I actually have the other one that I was going to put in. Here. Just not sure where exactly I want to put it. I don't want to highlight either one of these, so I think I'm going to put it right in the middle. So like if somebody wants to do a little twirly gig right there, then <coughs> they're welcome to do it. Uh, yes, this is my house, um, Killa. Um, this is the bunker house, to be specific, a bit underneath. I built a skating rink for um, a guild event I will be hosting there for uh, tomorrow. So I'm just putting in some last little touches. I really didn't want to go too overboard in decorating and everything. Um, mostly it's just going to be a place where our guild members can gather. Um, we're going to do some little reading of uh, Winterfest poetry kind of stuff. And um, there's kind of a little lotto thing that we're doing. Something that we've been collecting names for over the, the past uh year and um, so I'm giving away some uh, uh, cash shop stuff and everything. They're also uh, like the Snarfy, Snarfy Links mount and a couple other things. Um, the, the one big thing I guess I've added in is the little um, slushy stand down here. Uh, I had originally thought I would go with um, uh, putting in the Orin vendor cart and saying it was like apple cider, which I've done in the past in a couple of other wintry areas, but um, I decided to go a little different, uh, mainly because I uh, went to place this cup down and I was trying to place it just like I did this one, and I guess I hit an angle of the decor and uh, and uh, it came in sideways and I thought, well, you know, maybe they spilt something. So I, the, the, the actual dropping the, the little mess here is just an ice watch, uh, the strain ice watch that you can get straight from the vendor. So it's just turned upside down so you don't see the actual eyeball. And then there's another one that I've strategically placed to make it look like it's pouring down. So I figured, well, you know, apple cider isn't purple. Um, maybe in Wildstar it could be, but uh, for me, I didn't want it to be purple, so I think a, a slushy sounds better. And it's kind of a wintry kind of drink, so. Um, you can see I've incorporated the uh, Protostar um, honey extraction platform. It took a little bit of trickiness to kind of fit it in and make it look like it's supposed to be there. Um, there's a bunch of it that's behind the wall that I... Uh, tucked in. It's like a really big contraption, but I just wanted the tanks um, to make it look like, you know, when they want to fill in a cup, they just turn it and, and there it is. Um, but there was still a lot of stuff stuck out um, that I ended up couldn't hiding, so I just added in a little storage booth or whatever for the faux door and then kind of made some piping. Um, it's uh, probably a little disturbing that there's some flam flammable stuff going into the drink, but uh, that was that was the idea I come up with. So it's mostly just I added some cylinders and tubes and um, a little protostar bomb and went with it that way. Um, the faux little building here is just entirely uh, Cassian pillars. The top is just one big giant one sunk into the ground and and the sides are just individual ones. Uh, the door is crates and the bottle for the handle. Uh, I did the same uh, thing to kind of matchy match. Um, this is going to uh, play um, as uh, the bathroom. So you go in and 
that's where you go to the to the restroom. I just didn't want to make a restroom because you know inevitably you have to figure out a toilet and a sink and I just didn't want to mess with that. So that's what we have there so far. Um, I think it's pretty much done. I really don't want to add too much. Like I said, there's things I could add just for the sake of adding it, but you know, even if you have the space, which I do, um, I still have uh, 60 something decor to go. Uh, I just don't want to spend that here when I still have a lot of stuff on the exterior that I want to include, um, such as um, the signs and some of the gift bags and things. Let me see if I can get out of the tree here. The only bad thing about where I put the entrance is you get stuck in the tree. Um, before I forget, uh, we do want to do um, uh, the reveal for today's Advent house, the holiday house. And um, let's see. Go ahead and just copy this one. Maybe. Uh, I think I duplicated it instead of placing it. <laughs> Let me just send that to create there. Let's try it again. The copy and paste. There we go. So today's reveal for day, um, I think it's 18 that we're on, is the lollipop. Needed some more candy stuff. Yeah, exactly, Norton. I don't want to overload it. Like I said, sometimes less is more. Um, you want to get the main things. Anyway, here we have the lollipop. It's basically just a sleeping bag um, for the, the swirly candy part um, and uh, fence posts, the pickets. Uh, the round, the, the top part is the little round knob, so I sunk that in and that's the little decoration, and then of course the lollipop stick itself is a couple of towels. Um, you know, before we got the snowballs and the little snow mounds and the snowy hill and stuff, there really wasn't a lot of white stuff you could choose from, and those towels really helped save the day. <clears throat> anyway, so that's the reveal for today's holiday house decor for the advent. Um, I guess we'll go to um, my alt plot and see about doing a little bit more decoration there. See if there's anything else we want to add to it. Since I still have those two um, little trees, the extra trees, um, maybe we can put some decoration on those. I think I'll go with candles on one and maybe some some more kind of flower stuff to it. So again, um, we've got the the holiday uh, garlands on the outside, the tree, the wreath, and then inside we've got a couple more trees. I've just planted different ideas of how one might create the tree and how one might decorate the tree. So we've got a lot of different little versions of the trees. Um, so we've got, it looks like two left to decorate. So we'll see if we can uh, come up with it. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it, guys. Okay, so um, what can we use for decoration on this one? I kind of want to say we want to go with pillows since it's a pillow tree, but we already used some on the other one, so I don't want to use the pink ones like we did over there. Let's see. Let's use some red ones. I'm just going to pop that on the wall there. And maybe the round purple ones. Dark purple or light purple? 
Let's go with the dark one instead. So we're just going to shrink those down. Again, it's just an idea of, you know, if you don't like purple, don't use purple. Let's see, I think that's a little too small. It's going to be one of those things where I back off a little bit and I can't see it. So let's see. That's too big. Well, it's a tough call. Okay, so I'm going to do just like um, with the ones um, the other day. We'll just spot it around. Now these I'm keeping the same size, so I'm not going to adjust the size. Just placement. I was worried that the purple might not work, but actually it kind of goes with the green nicely. We'll see how the red looks in a bit. Okay, a couple more for the other side. Exactly like the one on the other side, it's too, too much the same. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to believe it's so close, isn't it, Mario? What's scary is I haven't done any, um, like uh, food shopping yet. Um, usually I do that pretty early on because um, I like to do some of like the baking and stuff ahead of time. Because there's some things like some of the cookies and things that you can actually make like a week in advance. And I haven't even done that. So I'm, I'm already starting to feel very ill prepared for this year's <laughs> gathering. Okay, one more time for... I'm going to put one just in the back somewhere. That'll be all right. OK, and then uh, we'll throw in some red stuff here. So. I'll probably just tuck it in till there's just the corner showing and uh, see how that looks. May have to make it a little bit bigger. Are any of you going away for the holidays or are you going to be, um, is everything coming to your place? I'm kind of grateful that we don't do any traveling during this time. Not that the weather has been bad. It was actually unseasonably warm. Um, a lot of the ladies were 
commenting on that um, at the party last night because the last couple of years that we've gone, um, it was like uh, there was snow on the ground and it was like almost freezing temperatures and uh, things like that. It was like 17 degrees, um, very comfortable. I mean, it wasn't like warm, warm, and it wasn't like really cold, just comfortable. And it was kind of weird. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I prefer it now. You know, when I was younger and it was my folks um, doing the holiday thing, we would go to like, um, well, mostly during like the Thanksgiving holiday, um, we would go to like two or three uh, relatives' houses and have different kinds of dinners. And it was just, and then of course with uh, Christmas, it was always uh, Christmas at grandma's, we'd go to theirs and, you know, there was every grandkid run amok, you know, in and out of the doors and, and in and out of the fridge and just noise. I, I sound like the Grinch, it's like just noise, noise, noise. It was just, it was just awful. And I kind of promised myself that when I got my own home, that it wouldn't be that um, horrendous, I guess is the word. I mean, I don't want, uh, you know, I never wanted my son, you know, dreading the holidays, because um, that's how it was for myself and, and uh, probably for some of my other family members. It was just a, not a super fun experience. And so we kind of keep ours low key. It's just um, myself, my husband, my son, and then we have um, my husband's parents over. Now, if my parents were nearby and it wasn't uh, so costly to like fly over um, every year, we would probably have them too. But um, since that is not the case, uh, it's just the five of us. And, you know, I come up with things to kind of keep us entertained. You know, we do little games. We do that minute to win it stuff where um, you like have little activities that you do and see who can do the most of it within a minute, that kind of stuff. Um, that one, I think I'm going to shrink down just a little bit. Um, we did that uh, the year before last, and then last year was mostly um, since my father-in-law had had a, a heart surgery um, that year, uh, we went with um, mostly word games where we sat on our rear and, uh, you know, just all of us lined up on the couch and we did, you know, like, uh, what's that one called? Scategories or something and uh, some other kind of little wordplay stuff and uh, kept it a little low key, not a lot of movement and stuff because I didn't want him to, you know, feel either left out or um, overworked or anything uh, because of, you know, his condition and stuff. But this year we're going to do kind of a mix of the two, I think. Um, we're going to do something very un-Christmassy and play Cluedo, for one, because um, my father-in-law apparently loves um, mystery kind of stuff. So I figured, well, maybe that would be a fun game to play. Um, we may do like a, a trivia game and... Uh, Oh, well, that's sad. How did you spoil it, Bones? <laughs> did you forget to wrap it or something? Or is it, <clears throat> excuse me, or is it something that you couldn't wrap? Or did you just say it and, and spoil the gift? Oh, well, that's unfortunate, Norton. But I understand, you know, if there's other things that, you know, uh, priorities, um, especially for house builders, it can be um, really time consuming. If that eats into your real life activities, then yeah, you might have to rethink your priorities. But, uh, you know, don't delete anything. 
uh, you never know. I mean, it's a freebie thing, so you may uh, end up coming back later. You know, that's always a possibility. You know, leave us with that 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 uh, that little question mark. You know, don't just you know get rid of everything totally. <clears throat> Oh, is it the rating that's kind of, well, I can understand that too. Um, uh, once the free-to-play transition hit, uh, uh, there was at least, I want to say, a good handful of our guild members that just kind of almost quit on the spot. They were just so frustrated at a lot of the changes coming in and... Um, a lot of the things that they were hoping to be changed that didn't get changed and they just kind of lost the the I want I don't want to say gumption but the motivation um, was really gone and you know if if that's really one of the fun things for you and you lose the motivation for what you find fun then yeah it can kind of put a downer on everything else just the total gaming experience, so I understand that. Um, I've rated myself, but I do it more on a casual basis. When I played WoW, or I still play WoW, but um, when I rated in WoW um, many years ago, I did the like four or five nights a week, you know, three or four hours a night, and it was like, you know, go, 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 gotta, you know, improve everything and crunching the numbers and always constantly updating your gear and making sure it's got the top enchants and all that kind of stuff. And I promised myself that with uh, Wildstar, I would not get into it that heavily. I wanted to keep it just, you know, I want to see the content. I want to have fun with my guild, but I don't want it to become like a second job because that's how it felt. In, in World of Warcraft, it was like just the pressure and the stress of it, and it was just too much. And you know, at my age, I, if I'm having trouble staying up till midnight, you know, <laughs> the strain and stress of the raiding scene um, isn't for me. So um, while I have raided with my guild in Wildstar, it's been mostly, you know, it's to my own schedule. I don't raid every week necessarily. Um, I don't raid several times a week, it's always just once, and, you know, it's a three-hour period, but it's, um, I pick the day that they do it earlier so I can go to bed at a decent hour. Um, I don't do the, the min-maxing stuff, I just, you know, I, I have runes and stuff, and they're decent, but they're not like the top, um, but I, I just, very extremely casual. Um, so, of course, uh, while I might survive a lot of the, the stuff um, decently, uh, my DPS is really on the, the, the end, the lower uh, end of the spectrum. So I'm not like um, a must-have member of the team. But when, you know, you have a 20-man raid and you can only get 17 people to sign up, then having people like me is better than having no extras. So it's just one of those things that I've been allowed to participate because... Um, there wasn't like a full team at the time. But uh, now that more and more have become attuned and have gotten into it, and they're really aiming for heavier progression, that's probably something I'm not going to stick with too regularly because it's just not something I want to engage in. Housing is where my heart is, so that's where my focus is. And yes, I know uh, rating can unlock some things for housing, but... Um, uh, anyone that knows me, I'm completely content with just building with stuff off of the vendor, so it's not like I have to have those exclusive um, rating decor or anything. Yeah, see, I, I can understand that, Norton. I, I really do. And hey, Allison. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's... It's not, not harmful to take a break, you know, if you lose that, that motivation, that drive, and you need something to kind of break up that monotony, that's um, perfectly okay. I have no problem with people kind of taking a bit of a hiatus and maybe coming back 
on a more casual basis. Maybe you get into the rating later when, you know, possibly they add one, which I would mention um, they did have a, a an announcement on Reddit, I think it was, that come January 13th, um, Carbine's going to do like a press release or something um, about what's to come with the new year. So you know, maybe, fingers crossed, that will bring something that will kind of perk your interest again and uh, have you coming back. But yeah, for me, the housing is my end game so i'm and i can entertain myself because i can just make up projects um to, to play around with so i don't have any problem with that um so i think i have it a little easier than those that are actually trying to engage in content that's uh, especially group content you know it's not only they have to motivate you but they have to motivate 19 other people to try and uh, get in there uh, oh, uh, thanks, Allison. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I kind of have a thing for trying to make up paintings. Uh, this happens to me by nighttime one, and then I have the sunny daytime one. I actually have a couple of others on my main spot. I'll, I'll hop over there just to show you. Well, housing for some people that that can kind of keep you in. Um, uh, it, it's a it's a good um, time filler. Um, for me, I don't think of it like that. It's just entertaining for me. It's like like I said, it's my end game. That's my that's my rating is the housing stuff. But you know, for someone that's needing a break for from other aspects of the game, housing could be a way to kind of um, address that. Not everybody. Uh, certainly housing has its ups and downs and pros and cons, but um, yeah, this is the art shop in the mall and we did a, a snow scene um, here. Didn't get too elaborate, just trying out different things. You know, when you're making a little painting, you're trying to do it, you're working with three-dimensional kind of objects and you're wanting to make it look 2D. So, you still have that, you know, when you stand to the side, you can see that there's things sticking out. But for the most part, you want to kind of pretend that it's a flat uh, portrait or painting or something. And so there's like some challenge to it. But you can see that I've uh, kind of helped um, with the issue of hiding things. You know, if you're building up against an actual wall in like a, a prefab home, you don't have to have this framework that big. Um, or that thick, I should say. But if you wanted it you know, on a wall that's thin, like um, many custom homes have, the um, the framework is required because it um, uh, it's so uh, you don't want that poking through. So yeah, that's the snow scene, and then uh, we've got the dragon made out of lots of fences. I was like an extreme pain to try and put together. And then um, one of my faves is the sunset uh, one. I think my husband said that was his favorite too. Just just a, a random kind of attempt and it, it ended up working out pretty nicely considering the pieces I was using and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I will probably be making more of these because, um, as I said, uh, one of the objectives of this particular plot is I want to leave the the main uh, body of it, the, the skeleton of the, the building structure itself, but like with the shop, I want to be able to change out those pieces as I decide, hey, I want to add something new or I want to change this out from this thing that I've gotten tired of looking at to something new and uh, just kind of mix it up every now and then. It, it's like that way I don't have to be taken over for a month or two with an entire build project. I can just have these little mini projects to work on. And for me, that's uh, going to be a fun thing to do. It's not that I won't ever do a full plot um, project again. I've got um, 20 plus alts that I could eventually level up to housing um, level and uh, and uh, 
come up with some different themes for them, but right now that's not my uh, top goal. Right now it's just kind of make it easy, you know, because for the last year that's basically all I've done is I build a full plot, let it sit for a month or two, clear it all, and build another full plot, month or two, clear it. It's just a constant, you know, cycle, and I've gotten tired of that for the time being. And I want something a little more, more permanent. And uh, so it's gonna be fun, you know, here we've got the traditional um, tree centerpiece for the mall, but uh, you know, once the holidays are over, then that's gonna come down and I'm gonna have to figure out something else to put there. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of things I might come up with maybe. Um, I think our next big holiday would be February for um, uh, Valentine's Day. Um, I don't know if they're actually having that in the game. There's been some hints that there are some decor geared toward heart stuff, but, um, you know, I don't know what I would put in. I don't think I want to put in like a, you know, maybe I put in a special little um, romantic uh, little restaurant here or something where it's like a little two-seaters and I, I have no idea. I haven't really given it much thought at this point, but um, just same way with the signs. How am I going to make signs that are that change with the season? The thing I probably will try. I don't know if it'll work nicely, but leave the sign, but then add some bits on top of it, almost kind of like the painting. Just add my own little features, elements to it to make it look different than it does originally. So hide the candy canes with something else. Um, hide this with something else and just make it look like he's advertising, you know, anything other than the candy cane stuff. Um, this one would probably be a little tougher to do. Um, I probably just would leave it, but like here I could hide uh, the little holiday wreath with something else perhaps. Um, who knows? Because I really don't want to get rid of the signs. I want to keep all of that up as I get it. But and then, of course, um, the the Advent House would be coming down, so I'd have to come up with something for that. So I'm thinking like an information booth or something like that. I, I want something that's not going to use as much decor as this did, uh, because I want to use that elsewhere. I want to spend it on uh, more NPCs, um, more custom-built furniture for some of the shops. I, I still have one shop that's completely empty. But I haven't figured out what to put in it. Um, so if you have suggestions there, that would be um, helpful maybe, because um, I just can't think of anything that I might could. The, the criteria for the shop is it needs to be something that I can think of multiple objects that I could build, you know, custom build um, on a regular basis there. So like the toy shop, there's always toys you can come up with, you know, wagons and cars and um, little uh, teddy bears and, and uh, uh, like uh, planes and trains and and all kinds of things. Um, <laughs> cake run. Uh, candy shop, that might be tougher. We don't have a lot of, in, you know, containers that are filled with things that might look like it. And I unfortunately only got one pumpkin from uh, Shades Eve. I didn't even think about uh, grabbing a bunch of those so um, I don't have that at, at hand. Uh, we have like a bag of pearls that might could represent some candies um, but it would be tough you know because I've done like popcorn machines and they have been a pain because you pick the item that you want to be the popcorn and you have to put in like 50 of them in this one little confined space shrunk down to make it look like something and that would just be a, a horrible mess I think trying to mimic that for a bunch of different candy bins but that's that's an idea you know it's something that you can think of um, it might become more feasible later on depending on the decor that's added um, but yeah it definitely needs to be something that I could uh, I feel confident that I could keep thinking up things you know like I have the flower shop there's lots of different kinds of topiaries you can make um, fashion your own trees, uh, that kind of, and we, the, the, wind, uh, the holiday decorations in the Alt's house um, was a clear indication that there's lots of ways you can make trees, you know, so 
it's just uh, one of those things that uh, I just haven't come up with something that I'm happy with yet, so I've left it empty. I may just give me something that looks like uh, hazard tape and say, you know, coming soon and just leave it that way. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm hoping I'll come up with something. Um, I did add a few things to my own version of the tree shelf. I haven't actually gotten a hold of a, one of the tree shelves that um, they actually offer with the Winterfest thing, but so I made one myself and uh, I added a few a few things. Um, I would uh, like to mention that the bags are uh, hollow. So you do have to consider if you're going to have them that, you know, what are you going to put in them? Uh, that's one thing. Um, so then you have, and they're paper thin, you know, no pun intended or whatever, but so you have to be careful about what you stick in them because they might be sticking out the sides of the bag. I had that trouble with the, the toy shop one that I put together with the ship that's inside it. It was like poking out everywhere and it was the cape having to make it small and then there's just like a lot of air space, a lot of gappiness, so tricky. Okay. See, I'm missing an NPC here that I really want to add in, but, but maybe a role player can come and say, hey, I'm shopping and I bought some toys and he's repairing something for me or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, let's go back to my alt spot and see what we can, um, whoops. <clears throat> Thanks, Norga. <clears throat> you should come by and visit it in person. You know, make yourself an exile alt if you haven't already, and <laughs> come by and visit in person. What did I use for the ground outside? Um, those were the uh, snowy ice platforms, the large ones. I just sized them up really, really big and just, it was tough um, getting them to place in certain areas because, you know, it looked nice on the outside, but then there would be like snow piles and bits kind of um, appearing inside the mall. So you had to tilt and twist and, and just, it took a lot of, and I, you know, I, I hesitate to even touch it because I'm afraid I'll like mess it up because I did that a few times with some other oversized items in another plot and it was a real big pain to try and um, get it packed the way it needed to be. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, just the snowy ice platforms. Now it's the large ones. There are some small ones that you can get directly from the vendor. Um, I think it is yeah it's the small one it's not as um, contoury as the large one the large one has bigger snow piles on some of the ends um, and I think it plays better to having uh, more variation in your landscape um, but it's a cheap alternative the the snowy platform has been going pretty high on the auction house you know I, I say high for some it's you know, chunk change because they're like, you know, loaded, but for others, it's still a lot of work, you know, anything over a plat that's um, pricey in my opinion. So um, if you don't have the, the, the funds to purchase those, these are your next best um, thing. Same way with the, um, the massive umbrella tree. A lot of people have been using that to hide their entrance, um, uh, teleporter pad, you know, turn it upside down because the bottom of the tree actually mimics the ground. Well, the cheap alternative for that would be the snowy hill. Um, it does the same exact thing as the the uh, the massive umbrella tree without all of the the weird um, mess of the the roots and everything. So if you look. It mimics the sandy ground that I have um, as the main ground option. So wherever you move it, it just it's like a mirror of whatever's down below it. 
and uh, you can actually fit it also around the entrance. I've seen some people report that they were able to do that. The only difference is the massive umbrella tree, you can have it a little bit smaller, um, but the, uh, the snowy hill, I think you really have to size it up pretty big um, from what I've seen. Um, as far as where the uh, snowy ice platform large come from, as far as I know, the Metal Mall Prime uh, World Boss in um, White Veil is the one that drops those, I think. I think he also drops the Frozen Pillars, the, the large ones of those, um, which we have. Uh, uh, can't spell. Uh, I thought we had a pillar here. It might be the icicles I'm thinking of. Yeah, you can use these instead of that. Um, There's a lot of, uh, the thing I hate about when they add new things to the vendor, uh, you have to hunt every single item because it doesn't uh, give any special, like, it's not like we have a section that we can say new or recently added or um, holiday related or anything. It's just, you have to hunt and pick and some of them are in different sections, you know, where there's some snow covered rocks and things like that, and unless people are shouting it to the rooftops, a lot of people are just simply unaware that a lot of these things have been added. Because I, I love the, the frozen water. The times that I've used it, I haven't used it for frozen water, but um, it's still a nifty looking uh, item. Okay, so uh, we have the, the purple and red tree. I need something for the topper. I'm not sure what we could use. I'm gonna see what kind of junk I have in. in uh, my crate here. Thankfully she doesn't have as much junk as my other one, but still quite a bit of junk. Mm, let's see. Could go with another pillow perhaps, but let's just try that since we're going pillows. Um, We want the pink, or the, let's go with the yellow. I don't think we've used it yet. <laughs> well, yeah, I try to show some of it, um, but really there's, they should just add a, a section or a way of like maybe putting a star next to the items that are new and then just change it out when they have a, the next update or something like that. It's just a kind of a clue for people that uh, it's, it's really, it's a pain in the rear to, it's kind of like the, the, um, the uh, public homes. It's such a pain to use that tool because 95% of the homes you visit off of that are empty or some other kind of awfulness and uh, it would just be nice to maybe only go to homes that are on an approved list or something, you know, you know, I make the list myself, but, uh, I only do it for, you know, my side of the pond. Um, we do have one that's working on lists for entity, but it is a time consuming project to kind of keep that, you know, maintained, especially as people change their, uh, themes or even their character names and things like that, it can be kind of a troublesome thing to try and keep track of. Because, uh, you know, like the last time I did a really big update, I purged like over 60 homes and then I got to looking at the list and it looks still super long. It's like, how many houses do we have on this list now? It's like well over a hundred, like so many. And, but they're all, you know, worth a look. If, so I'll keep at it, but it's, it's tough to keep it updated. So there we have, it almost looks like a, an orange slice, doesn't it? I think I'm going to remember that for when I need some kind of other fruit, you know? It looks like a slice of orange or something. Without the little doodads hanging out of it. That's an interesting pattern that it made. I like that. There we have a little, almost kind of a sunny pillow tree there. 
So one more to go, and um, not sure what we're gonna put on that. We've done cheese, we've done pillows, we've done flowers. What else could we use? Uh, looking at what I have a lot of. Uh, space. I think we'll just go with the candles. I think that'll be easy. Maybe not as creative, but... And we'll use the... I think the medium ones will work best. As, as they shrink down, then um, they still got a little bit of thickness. The, the tall ones, when you shrink them down, they do kind of disappear a little bit. This looks like a good size. So we're going to put one kind of right in the middle, maybe. Now, obviously in real life, you don't want to put candles in your tree because that's like a fire hazard, but, you know, this is just a game, so you can get away with that kind of thing. stuck it too much in the, the greenery there and I wasn't going to be able to select my candle. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad people find um, some of these videos helpful uh, whether it be for new information about stuff or just for inspiration for their own plot builds I'm glad folks find it helpful because um, that uh, makes me less um, worried about you know did I make the right choice in trying to even do these uh, these broadcasts Often my husband's like, "Are there people actually watching you?" And I was like, "Yeah, there's there's people that come and, and talk with me and stuff." So something's working right. Okay, let's get another one back here. I think. One here, I think. Oops, want to rotate it. Now, you notice I'm not like trying to like turn it or, or whatever I'm just kind of like sinking it in the very edge the very edge of the tree because you know it's I know it's kind of floaty but uh, that doesn't really bother me in this case um, some of the pillows and stuff I wanted to kind of have it touching so you had to kind of turn it tilt it um, you can see with the candles you don't really have that much of an issue with it, it just kind of works Well, see, that's that's a surprise. <laughs> uh, I know it's probably uh, for other streamers that do their housing tours. Maybe they notify um, their potential victims, um, but me, no. I just kind of like you know do like militia visiting. I like sneak attack kind of thing. I just come in and say, hey, your plot's open to the public, so I'm gonna you know use that to my advantage and just come in whenever I feel like it. Um, you know, I do know some some builders are a little annoyed with that because a lot of them don't want their plot being looked at until it's finished. But 
you know, I always offer to revisit if they update it and stuff. I've done that uh, for several, several builders. I'm not sure I need that one there. Getting a little full up above. But yeah, um, I've had a few people tell me that. that uh, uh, yeah, exactly, Soccer. If, if they really want to keep it perfectly hidden, they'll have to just uh, lock me out of their house by setting it to private, which some have done. I like showcase their house and I notice like the next week it's closed. It's like, oh, you know, did I cause that? You know, did I freak them out by having because you know, oftentimes when I showcase a house, that means that the house gets a lot of extra uh, visitors suddenly, and maybe they're like, you know, what's going on? Um, what's also fun is nine times out of ten, if I go to visit a, a random plot to check it out to see if I want to stream it or whatever, um, the owner is not there. But when they are, I I hesitate a little. I was like, well, should I say hello? Um, are they actually building right now? Would they mind me watching and all that kind of stuff? And and uh, sometimes as soon as I zone in and I see that there's somebody there, they'll like come take a look at me and then they're gone. It's like okay, they didn't want to talk. And uh, but others, they're they're really nice. They'll they'll give personal tours. They'll say, oh hey, you know, fantastic that you're here looking around. Um, and it, it's happened even live when we've been streaming it. Sometimes we'll run into the owner. And they'll just kind of go, hey, you know, and it's like, that's fun. <coughs> yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes I, I uh, don't want to, to put the owners on the spot um, because uh, there have been some that I've encountered that um, they're kind of averse to being on camera and also um, I kind of try to keep my channel a little clean with the language but it's not always something you can control if you have somebody chatting and they're spouting off stuff and I don't know sometimes I include them and sometimes I don't it depends on uh, maybe what's going on but yeah, it's not on purpose per se, it's just uh, the mood of it. If I feel like um, they don't mind me talking with them or uh, it doesn't confuse what I've already, you know, maybe I, because uh, I want to say uh, when I saw you on your plot that one time while we were streaming, I had already gone through like two thirds of it. And then you were like trying to show us some stuff that we'd already seen as like, no, I, I want to go this way. <laughs> so it's kind of hard that way. Uh, but like if we can get you right at the front, then that would be um, the way, that would be more of a better guided tour kind of thing. Yes, I did a couple of times. Um, but I like a lot of the changes that you've done to it, especially the little, um, like two houses, the little apartments there. That's That's been fun. Speaking of apartments, um, you guys will remember that I did um, do a co-op build uh, with, um, let's see, let me just go there since I'm talking about it. This isn't really holiday related, but um, talking about the apartment made me remember. Uh, I did a co-op build on a guildmate's plot. They're doing a, a pirate shanty town kind of thing, and we worked on um, my little overdone corner here. I built uh, this little pirate house and uh, added in the um, Skull Falls feature. Uh, they want, they had it kind of running off the side and they said that they were planning on putting, putting something in. I said, well, if you, if you want, I can uh, come up with something. So that's, that's what I put together. But um, funnily enough, once I finished this project, uh, I got invited to work on another one. Ellie has invited me to work on an apartment on their plot. They're doing a city plot. So I haven't really gotten started too much on that one. I, 
because mostly I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. And the spaces uh, get a little small square space. Um, again, they've said basically I can, you know, use however much decor I want, which is kind of dangerous for to say to someone like me because I can really go kind of overboard with details and things. Clearly, this is a good example of that. I mean, most of um, the members that have built, I'll show you an example. Uh, this is one uh, member. They just put in this little tiny shop, and it's awesome looking, and it suits them perfectly. But uh, I couldn't uh, just keep it small like that. I had to go big and extravagant. But uh, uh, yeah, I really liked how it turned out. You know, you do have the quirkiness of um, the skull is actually the candle holder. So you've got, it's the one with the hands that do like this on the skull and it's holding it up. Um, so you can see, actually see a couple of the fingers still, but there was no way for me to hide that nicely without it covering too much of the skull out. So I changed it up. Skulls. Not sure what you mean by that. Is that somebody's name? <laughs> is it misspelled? I don't know what that is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if if you're listening and if you're thinking about inviting me in your pot, do so at your own uh, caution because uh, uh, that's uh, if you give me free reign and say you know whatever you want is acceptable that's a dangerous kind of arrangement because i can um go pretty outlandish um in fact i really had to kind of say whoa i i gotta stop this i can't put any more there's lots of things i would love to add i'd like to add some more um, details around it i was thinking of putting um like a little little beach scene here uh, adding some things on the rocks, um, like a little, I don't know, camp thing or whatever. But I had to stop myself and say, no, because if I keep on, then the rest of my guild um, that decides to join in on this co-op will not have anything to to uh, to use. So um, I've had to kind of rein it. In fact, I've invited them. If, if they need to, I'll clear out this top one with the furnishings that I've got in there and uh, let somebody... Um, Put in their own decorations on the inside however they like because I, I i felt bad after i built it i was like i'm so sorry i used up so much decor to build this thing um i love how it turned out but um it's just one of those things but um we'll be showing uh ellie's place um not this week uh coming up but the next one um since ellie's on exile side um this next Wednesday's tours will be Dominion side, hopefully. Um, to be honest, I haven't really found any more um, winter type plots there. Um, I know Nilia and them are working on finishing up the uh, Venus Rising's Winterfest plot to promote the, uh, the housing competition that they're hosting. But other than that, that would be just mostly a, a retour to kind of check out some of the things that they've added since having access to the Winterfest decor. But um, I, I have no luck in finding a lot of winter plots on uh, on the Dominion side. So I don't know. I may end up doing two weeks of, well, three weeks in a row of exiles on that. This really depends. I'm going to do some more random visiting over the weekend and see if I can dig up some more. You know, if you're on Dominion side and you know of any winter plots that I haven't showcased in the past, um, it doesn't have to be winter fest, just winter re, um, then be sure and, and drop me a note. Because, um, you know, there are some other ones like uh, Misko Fraz's uh, workshop. I think that's set in the kind of a snow scene, but. I toured them a, a few months ago, I think. Um, I know there's uh, Harper, Harp Varker, I think is the name. Um, they're the ones with the Channel 12, like a news station that's underground. Uh, but again, they haven't changed anything since the last time I visited, so. 
yeah, that's kind of the way mine is. Um, bones. I have a hamster wheel in my little tin bucket, and that's it. But that was mostly because I ran out of money. You know, I was so used to having, you know, funds just at my fingertips on my main, and then I went to the alt and started buying furniture, and before I knew it, I was all out of money. And of course, I don't play on them to level them up or anything, so they're broke. Anyway, um, I'm not sure what else um, we, we might want to add to this one. I, I don't really want to get too overboard with the decorations. Uh, we found a lot of little empty spaces that we added trees. Now we have a total of five on this plot. Um, you know, I think we pretty much covered all of the ideas that you could use with um, packages, you know, if you want to go simply with crates. Um, and other containers, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, obviously, with the Winterfest decor, you now get the um, the gift bags. Let's see. I will mention that there were some. Uh, oops, wrong button. There we go. There were some uh, additions to the decor that's available right now that um, apparently only drop from the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, instance, the expedition that you can go in, the Sky Mall in the Sky or whatever it's called, uh, because I have seen some of these on the auction house. Uh, specifically, let me look, most of these I think you can buy straight from the vendor Let's see, I know there's the, yeah, the snow-covered bush here I've seen on the auction house, uh, the fern, uh, the snowy tree cluster, uh, the large snowy bulb tree, uh, the snowball, and the rocks, uh, the blue rock, and the round snowy rock, and the snowy sandstone rock. I've seen all of those. I haven't seen this one yet. Um, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. So there's a lot of stuff that has popped in, um, but uh, as far as I can tell, you can't get them from the vendor for the um, cold cash event currency. So I assume that means that they are just random, in, you know, included in the loot um, table for uh, the end of the instance. As I think um, I got one of these, the snow blue, snowy blue rock, as one of my prizes uh, one time. Um, same way with uh, there is a pet, there's a little gift robot looking thing. Um, it's a, uh, and it's uh, a lot of, the, uh, I know the, the pet itself is buying on pickups, so you won't find it on the auction house, so you'll actually have to have the luck of getting it to draw. Um, but I wanted to show that there, there are some things on the auction house that uh, I don't see on the event vendor, but I have seen on the auction house. Granted, at the moment, they're fairly expensive. We're talking uh, several plat for some of these things. So be aware of that. I'm trying to see if there was anything else. Um, I do know that there are a few... Oops. Bill bar. Um, the billboards, um, I didn't notice them as being um, on the vendors, but I have seen them on the, the auction house as well. Well, that's a very generous offer, Norman. Well, it's like when I, I build, like with the co-ops for um, my uh, Laomi's place or LA's that is giving me, I, they always say, oh, you know, if you need something, just let me know and I'll buy it for you. Or um, if you need something crafted, I'll, I'll get it. And I usually try and say, no, I'll supply it because, you know, it would seem kind of wrong, uh, you know, I do have plenty of renown on this character and plenty of um, plat, so 
uh, it would seem wrong to you know take that offer. But uh, for Dominion side, yeah, that's that's pretty skimpy. It would be easier if we had like um, account-wide crates or something. That would be very helpful. Um, but you know, that's wishful thinking, I guess. Um, I'm trying to see if there was any. Oh, did I see the one? Um, there was a frosted something. Yeah, the uh, frosted rind leaf. The it reminds me of the the white flower, but it's just shorter and it's got leaves on it with a little bit of snow topping. So you know, if you're looking for some extra kind of uh, decoration for your plot that isn't necessarily winter fest, you know, doesn't have all those bright gaudy colors, and you're just looking for something for a year-round winter plot, these are some items you definitely want to keep an eye out for. Um, there is the snowball. I don't think it's on the vendor. It just comes in large. Looks like a marble almost with the stripes. But, um, you know, if you want to do your own, build your own snowman instead of using the, the, the ones that come as is, you can I'll maybe grab a few of these. Excuse me, getting the hiccups. See, that's the magic of uh, being on the stream. You make <laughs> buddies on on your alts. <laughs> well, I hope the, the little co-op there works out nicely. But yeah, it's, it's very generous. What I really need to do is just break down and start working on some of my, you know, leveling up my alts. But uh, I hate alts so bad because it's too repetitive for me. And time consuming. And it's time that I'd rather be spending building on my main spots. <laughs> so I, I use that as an excuse for not working on them. I know that's bad, but... Eventually, I will, because, you know, like I said, I, I will probably do some full plot builds later on. It's just, right now, I'm just not in the mood for it. And I have no idea, because, you know, most of the really good themes have been tackled already. So, you know, until I find something that I am fairly confident not anyone else has done, or very few have done, or I feel like I can do better, maybe, um, I probably won't do that. But, um, you know, and there's some things that you think, well, that would be cool, but then you just don't have the pieces for it. There's so many, like, basic building blocks that we're lacking, like, um, there's lots of things I'd like to have, like, with a round floor, but we don't have any, like, well, we've got the domes, but then you have to contend with that bottom part. If we had just, like, round plates uh, of those basic building blocks, you know, just cylinder, you know, not cylinder, but circle uh things same way with the glass um, some more variety of shapes and stuff i think that would be much better i mean think of how difficult it was to make that silly uh, dome on my mains plot and later they will eventually insert um some dome decor that actually is made of glass and make it so much easier <clears throat> I, well, it's funny you should say that, Soccer, because I'd actually thought about that. Um, in fact, I had considered doing that instead of the uh, the skating rink, and uh, I just chickened out. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that next year. You know, wait till we get some more <laughs> some more stuff to kind of work with. Um, but I just I don't know. It was uh, I think someone like uh, uh, Raven. Um, the one that did uh, the greenhouse recently, some of the clever ideas of using some of the uh, uh, special effects of certain decor as an actual overall effect, um, that really worked out nicely. Um, but, uh, well, either one, probably. I probably would go for the, um, the traditional one. 
uh, the the older one with um, uh, can you it was a Gene Wilder. Um, we're talking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for those that are were out of the loop for a minute. Um, it's just one of those things that it's passed my mind, but I didn't think I was clever enough to come up with that. Uh, you know, there's certain things that I feel comfortable in trying. You know, it's like that's why I never tackled a spaceship or a spaceport or anything because I'm just not very mechanically inclined. So. I can't think, you know, that little um, uh, slushy thing in the bottom, I was pretty proud of that because that's a little mechanical and it kind of looks okay. So I was like, yeah, I actually built something that looks like, you know, it had some thought to it, but that's not always the case. And I, I certainly didn't want to trust myself with trying to build a spaceship. I think I would have a lot of trouble trying to figure out what rooms is, you know, or what. Well, I like both, but you know, I grew up watching the the older, the original version, so it's just one of those things. Um, <laughs> well, thanks, Norgna. Um, it was a challenge in itself because, like I said, I wanted uh, some. Uh, some actual skaters uh, and that's not as easily done as said is like um, I don't know if I actually described what's being used as the, the little marks on the ice but those are plates and I don't know if you guys mess a lot with like trying to just finally have something showing no matter if you're incrementing it by 0.01 it still comes out too big um, and that was really tough to, to do without it looking overly done. I just wanted a few little marks here and there. And of course, the silly skates themselves, I couldn't figure out how to do them properly. So I've used the knives, but <coughs> it took some work to try and figure that out a little better. I like the gaffo, he's just kind of gliding on his butt. On his back just wee but uh it would be fun if we could get decor like the fab kits to have that kind of um movement like with the the icy pond if we had little decor pieces that behave that way so that you could put them anywhere you wanted and size them any way you wanted then you could add those kind of elements to your to your house your plot your theme because um, being able to do the slip and slide on this, that would be awesomely fun. Um, the skating tracks themselves, uh, like I said, they're just plates. Um, let me see if I can click on one here. They're just white plates that I have tilted and lowered just enough so you just see the edge. It was the only thing I could think of that would work. And I wanted something that had curve to it. Um, to get those nice little, like little streaky bits going. You know, some of them are straight, but uh, like this one is really curvy. And the only way I was able to do that was to use the plates. But uh, like here, um, these are actually um, the rocks, snow dusted rocks for the straight ones. There's this giant stone underneath, and I've just used just, just a little hair <laughs> of it. Um, maybe you could have used um, the white towels. That would probably work even better because um, it's already kind of narrow on the edges. But I ran out of them so because um, I used them all in decorations elsewhere, the ones that I had. So you just kind of anything white. Uh, the edges of... Um, the white fence post would probably work. The only thing you would have to contend with is the end of it being the round part. That might uh, become a problem, so you'd have to tilt a little bit. But it's got some nice crisp white edges that you could use um, from the little post itself. But uh, yeah, I think, let's see, what did I use here? Yeah, see, this is just the plate again. 
because the plate itself, it's not perfectly round. It's those, you know, polygon uh, edges. So part of it is kind of straight and I just made a really big one and did it that way. Yeah, just different ideas. You know, I've tried different approaches, experimenting with how it would look. But I, when I did the snow plot from last year, I used um, the uh, Orin walls as snow ground. And then on site, uh, on on that, I put like a little uh, sled, but I wanted to show the tracks where the sled had gone. And what I ended up using there was um, the edges of uh, sleeping bags, because um, the the orange wall snow was kind of bluish, and I was looking for another kind of blue. Because at the time, I wasn't thinking cleverly with white, you know, with the plates and stuff. And this year I wanted something white on the blue because it really pops nicely against that rather than having a darker blue show up. Well, uh, for most things, um, being frozen in place, I think has its advantages. Um, the result is always constant. When you get, like, say you have these animated things, um, I can't directly, it's not like I can use just this piece if I wanted and have it like a picture hanging on the wall because these other things are gonna be bobbing in and out. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, or maybe it twists or turns or something. It's, it's nice to have some animated stuff and others not so nice. There's things that I wish would stand still and others that I wish moved. Um, like uh, the scarf here, that works great because it moves and it gives a little motion um, to the little character, even though the character itself isn't moving. Um, I do know that there were some add-on uh, writers that actually set up some movement type of um, add-ons, but the problems with the add-ons, like with Katya's, um, wild ball thing and you know to make the housing a little more interactive and uh everything the person that owns the plot has to be on the plot for that to work it's not like it functions when you're not online so it's kind of tough you know because i i know there was one really early on like in beta that would set it up so that you could have actual moving platforms for like those that were building jumping puzzles um, you could like put a box or something and have it track a certain, you know, path, like a pathing kind of thing. Um, the problem is that person always had to be there for it to work. And um, for the person that owns the plot, those barriers that come up when you're working on something, especially on the exterior, the interior, you don't see it as, you know, it doesn't really bother you, but on the exterior. You see those, the, the netting that comes up with the barriers that would constantly flicker off and on. And because what they're doing, it's not like the object is moving smoothly. It's like it's replacing it over and over and over and over and over again just to get the movement. It's simulating the movement. Um, that's why I prefer um, carbine to tackle objects like, you know, we have the little elevators in game. I've seen lots of examples of that from platforms to those little glowy green things that move and float. We need those kind of pieces incorporated in so that the, the, the tracking is already built in rather than relying on add-ons to do that for us because the add-ons are troublesome because like I said, you have to have the person on the plot for it to actually work. To, to make it look like it's supposed to, to be. Um, like like I said, Katya's Wild Ball, it's great, but again, you have to schedule it so that you're, you're there with the person so that the game actually works. It would be great if Carbine could incorporate that somehow to be able to run while you're not there. Same way with the moving decor. Because uh, like I said, there is a, an add-on that you can, I could sit here and get it so that it would show the little guy skating in a circle or something or a figure eight or whatever but it would only be you know with me you know or people that happen to be on while i'm there it would but it would be stuttery as well it'd be like kind of flashy looking 
and uh, not as smooth as if it was built in. So yeah, and, and then of course, it's like, uh, for instance, a lot of people are probably disappointed at the, the tree shelves. Um, the ones that we get from the vendor, as far as I can tell, they're stationary. They don't move, they don't float, you know, actually, they don't rotate like the ones in, in the city. But there's a reason for that, because if you put that on there, it's not like we can link things to it and the linked item follow the track of the, the motion. So it will look weird to have the tree shelf spinning and then the, the gifts or anything that you put on it are stationary. So um, it's kind of, you know, a give and take. So they made the option that the, you know, they made the choice that the, the tree shelves for us would be stationary. Um, other things, you know, they've allowed to, to you know, be, have the movement or some kind of effect and sometimes it's helpful and sometimes it's not you know just one of those those things there's a, a pros and cons to both ways and i think that's the challenge of a builder to figure out how you can use those things that move or don't move um to work the way you want them to yeah the the, the tree shelf is a really good example of where an animated tree shelf probably wouldn't be the best approach. Okay, I know we really haven't done too much today. It's mostly been a lot of gabbing on my part, um, so apologies for that. But uh, I think we're going to have to call it because uh, my back is starting to kill me and the lack of good sleep has really drained me quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to a relaxing weekend of worrying about the real holiday because uh, like I said I still got uh, we got the, the whole menu we've got the menu planned out I have it written down uh, all our main course appetizers desserts and everything but I still have to produce a shopping list according to that so but um, yeah it's uh, <laughs> oh it's no problem Norna I actually I, I appreciate and prefer when there's some discussion going on as uh, you know a lot of the things that I'm talking about not everybody wants to hear but if there's an actual question or you know something that you guys want to talk about that's fine it's perfectly fine I just have a really bad habit you know I'm one of those people that can't walk and chew gum at the same time kind of thing the multitasking is not my deal so I may be building something and then it, I have to stop because my brain can't concentrate you know on two different things I have to kind of pause it and uh, focus on the question at hand. But anyway, um, again, the next two days will be uh, not streamed, of course, with the reveals, but be sure and uh, watch my Twitter feed because I will be posting images there as usual. But come Monday, um, unless something unforeseen comes up, I will be uh, going over those um, when we do the reveal for Monday. I'll backtrack and we'll talk about what uh, was revealed over the weekend and what I used and that kind of thing. Again, if you guys have ever have questions about something that I put together, um, even if I've said it already once, what I used, if you didn't catch it or you forgot and you're, you're curious, feel free to ask. Um, I'm always happy to share what I, you know, nothing that I do is really secret per se. You know, there are some times that I want to kind of keep things hidden for a little bit, but that's mostly to do with event kind of activities that I would prefer to have it kind of not shared right away. I don't want to surprise some people, but um, I'm always happy to explain how I put something together um, or the troubles that I had putting it together or how I might have done it differently, that kind of thing. Um, again, uh, happy to have suggestions, you know, if you think there's something that this plot just has to have, or any other plot that I work on for, for instance, um, happy to hear the, oh, excuse me, major tickle in the throat. Um, if you have suggestions or ideas that you just want to throw out, happy to hear those too. 
I'm happy to hear about your own builds if you're working on something and you think um, you want me to come and take a look. It's not like I would judge you or anything. Um, I, I'm happy to offer feedback or um, suggestions of my own if you want it. But if you just want to show it off, I'm happy to come take a look as well. Um, so yeah, we've had a busy week uh, and probably next week is going to be even busier because um, you know, with the big holiday coming in, um, it's uh, everybody's going to be, especially with um, registration for uh, Venus Rising's uh, housing plot contest. Uh, I think a lot of people will be coming out of the woodwork to show that they've been busy uh, setting up their little winter plots. I've already seen some for Entity posting theirs in the forums, so um, I expect the uh, EU to be doing the same thing soon. Um, because the startup for signups for Venus Rising's competition is the 19th, which is soonish. I think it's. I uh, can get my calendar to pop up. Let's see, today is 18th, so yeah, tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. So I'm hoping that we will have a lot of entries. Uh, I know it makes my job harder because, you know, the more lovely stuff that's out there, the harder it will be to choose um, the winners. But um, uh, anything community-wise, I think it's the more the merrier. So, yeah. Um, but not only that, uh, but... Uh, we do have the, they recently announced the 12 days of Christmas that's going to be going on. I think that started today, in fact. Um, and from what I understand, I could have that um, misinterpreted what I read and, and heard. But um, the way I understand it, as long as you log in every day, you are kind of automatically entered into a random drawing for each day. And each day they're going to be giving away an X amount of prizes for X amount of people. So the first day is going to be one prize for one person. Next day is two prizes for two people. Next day is three prizes for, you know, three people. Um, and each day the prizes are different. So I think um, today's is um, the Papa Phineas costume. And then another day, it's going to be like a set of decor pieces. And then another day, it's a mount. And, you know, it just goes on and on. And it's going to continue for the next 12 days. So that's something, you know, it may, you know, give you guys a chance to get, get a hold of some decor or something. Um, so there's that. Then there's the housing competitions. Uh, Black Dagger Society on Entity side is running one um, that they've already gotten a uh, one or two submissions that I remember um, haven't really been following the thread too much, so I don't know if more have been tried. I assume so. Um, but theirs is already, registration's been open for a while now. They're already um, looking at uh, getting close to the judging period, I think. Um, tomorrow's is uh, Venus Rising's registration opens, and that will last until the 27th of December, so you have until the weekend after Christmas to get your entry in and then judging will start from the 27th all the way until January 10th I think and uh, <laughs> that's true no that's true if I'm not having fun I wouldn't be here the, you know, the day that I feel like housing has become a second job is probably the day I will quit but I really don't see I have too much fun with it it's too entertaining for me because um, even if I'm just goofing around you know like with the paintings I just say well huh, can I put this in here and and that's fun for me so <laughs> well I hope you do get some some work done bones um, I'd like to see some more winter stuff even if you don't plan on entering the competitions um, the more winter stuff the better Gives me something to tour on the days that I want to show some of that off. That goes for Dominion too, you know. Us exiles can't hold the the whole thing ourselves. There's gotta be some Dominion that have some winter aspirations as well. But like I know uh, Marshall's working on their Christmas plot on Exile side, so or Winterfest plot. Wintery plot. I don't think it's Winterfest per se, but it's snowy. 
Um, so I'm hoping to be able to tour that um, the last week of December. Um, but like I said, on, on Dominion side, it's just the one that I know of right now. So I'm going to have to really hunker down and spend a few hours going through the random stuff to see if I can find anything. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to call it good for this week. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me. Um, I love um, my regular chatters. Um, I appreciate all the follows, um, the tweets and retweets and uh, things like that. Because uh, without you guys, I think I would probably be pretty bored with the, the streaming. Um, I was just here sitting here talking to myself all the time. Now, sometimes I understand folks have things to do and, and my hours are kind of weird. So not everybody can come visit uh, as regularly as they might want to. But um, at least uh, I have that uh, fun anticipation that somebody might come and join me now and then. So that's, uh, that's fun for me. That makes it uh, worth the while, the effort. Um, and as long as I can keep coming up with and little projects to work on, then, you know, I will continue to stream them and uh, hopefully be somewhat mildly amusing or informational. Um, so, yeah, next week we'll probably um, do some more uh, Winterfest. I'm hoping that I'll have more time this weekend to do uh, some extra visits to the uh, Sky Mall expedition and collect as much as I can over the weekend and then we'll just sit down um, next week and try and uh, finish off some of the decorations. Like I said, we're at about, yeah, we've got like just a handful of decor left that I can put out for now and just try and patch in some of the missing bits that we have. and. Uh, call it good until after the holidays. Once the holidays leave, then we'll be like tearing down some of this and then trying to figure out what else to put in. And what will be extra fun is trying to find alternative uses for all of this holiday decor because, you know, there's got to be some extra kind of thing that, uh, you know, maybe use the bow for something else or the bottom of the box or, you know, who knows what, just to you know, kind of use and reuse and not only bring it out during the holidays. That's one of the things that when I am buying decor, especially if I'm spending actual plat and whatever, um, I usually go for items that I'm fairly confident I can use at other times. It's not strictly just the holiday. Uh, so there was a lot of um, shady stuff I didn't even bother getting because I just couldn't see myself using it in any other instance. But um, we'll work on that. Uh, we might visit uh, Ellie's place to see if I get started on the apartment there, but I'm probably going to wait until after um, the holiday is done before I really get into that too much. Um, we'll, of course, do the tour on a Wednesday. If I can't find any Dominion ones, then I'll hunt down some, some exile plots that we can use instead. Uh, so we'll probably be here mostly, um, if nothing else, we'll work on the beach, um, indoor beach area, even though it's not holiday-ish. Uh, we might brainstorm some more on an alts plot for some decoration or something, just to kind of tide us over until the big, the big days, but, um, yeah, uh, it's just going to be kind of, uh, Play it by ear as we go. I don't have a really big extravagant plan in mind as far as, you know, what we're going to work on, when, that kind of thing. But I hope you guys join me when you can. And because uh, like I said, I appreciate it. Um, until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, hopefully nobody gets sick um, and there's no um, big mad rush in the stores. I imagine there's going to be a lot of people doing some of their last minute shopping this weekend. Um, and I, I hope uh, whatever projects you're working on um, are going well. Um, if not, you know, always drop in, ask for some advice. We're happy to give it. Um, and even if you don't come to the stream, post in the forums if you want, uh, you know, a lot of extra advice. That's one of the best places to go. You know, a lot of people complain about the forums, you know, with the community being kind of 
um, snarky and stuff. But uh, for me, most of the experience, especially in the housing form, generally speaking, you get some really good help there. There's a lot of people that are willing to offer advice, suggestions and things. So if you find yourself in a little fix that you can't think of, you know, well, what kind of items could I use to create this look or this effect or this type of build, you know, just pipe up in, in the forums and they will be um, quick to answer, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, you guys have a great weekend. Um, stay out of trouble, try not to get sick, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.